Good morning, everyone. This is Lisa Jensen with the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance. Welcome to Roof Training in Arizona with ARCA. Today's presenters are going to include myself, Lisa Jensen, and John Jensen. We both run the training program for the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance. We also have with us today Jennifer George, the Executive Director of ARCA, and Jerry Brown, the owner and president of ReCore. Before we jump into the ARCA resources, I just wanted to make sure everybody is aware of the resources that you can find from the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance. We have a website, tileroofing.org. From there, you can find a lot of information about tile, the benefits of tile, technical bulletins, all of our installation manuals. And we also have links to all of our social media channels, including our YouTube channel, which records all of these short sessions. So once we are done today, within a couple of days, we will have this session up on the website as well, or on the YouTube channel. Our manufacturers are listed here. They are manufacturers of concrete and clay roof tiles. And one of the most frequented pages on our website is the contractor search. Uh, the way people get on that map is by taking one of our manual certification classes. And we offer two of them, one for most of the country, which includes Arizona, that's our regular manual. And then for those that work in Florida, we have a separate manual because Florida building codes are so different. We also offer these short courses. You can always see a schedule for our classes on our website. Uh, currently, we have today's class, we have a manual certification tomorrow, uh, and then we have a couple of other classes coming up in November and December and we're excited to be returning to the classroom in January. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jennifer, and Jennifer is the Executive Director for the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association, and uh, we have the pleasure of working with Jennifer. It's one of our best partnerships with the local contractors association. We've done a lot of trainings, and Jennifer's great about uh, sharing the marketing of any of our trainings as we're doing more webinars now in the current environment. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, so um, real quick about ARCA. Our primary focus is on education, networking, and advocacy. ARCA was established in 1969. Um, it's a dynamic and well-respected subcontractor trade association, and we are one of the largest trade associations in Arizona with a, approximately over 250 members throughout the state. Our membership is statewide, and in addition to that, um, it is also company-wide. So um, our annual dues are $495 for membership, or the basic membership, and anybody from the company can participate in the trainings, the education, sporting events, and the networking. Um, our our renewal process, if you're an existing member, will start on November 1st. We do have a deadline of January 15th, but that's not to say uh, that we won't, um, new members are welcome to join at any time throughout the year. And we do begin prorating our membership for new members um, approximately about September. We do have organization sponsorship, which is the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum levels. And the funds from that that program are what help fund our education and training. And we do have two categories of membership. One is the roofing contractor members. Um, they must have a roofing license. They must be licensed, bonded, insured, and in good standing with the register of contractors. And ending in 2021, we have approximately 134 roofing contractors. Our associate members are any company that provide a service to roofing contractors or an actual contractor that does not have a roofing license. So as I mentioned regarding the funds from the sponsorship, um, we do provide free safety training. Um, our normal classes that you'll find on our schedule will be OSHA 10, OSHA 30, record keeping, fall protection training, CPR first aid, ladder safety, PPE and fire extinguisher, rigging, confined spaces, and much more. Um, if there is a need or if we start having a large demand for something, um, we are always welcome to our able to put additional classes on our schedule. For education, uh, we do offer the ARCA Academy. Um, 
we typically have a class once a month and it fills up extremely quickly. So if you are interested in participating, um, we have, have not put the 2022 uh, schedule together yet, but keep an eye out for communications on that. We also offer forklift certification, um, various technology training. Uh, we recently had a class on Bluebeam. Um, in, in addition, uh, we provide a member discount or there is a member discount for the tile roofing certification. So resources and support. Um, one of the big features, um, so as a member, there are benefits. And one of them is a, an online safety manual. Uh, we did put it online so that you're able to access it um, no matter where you're at, if you're on a, a job site or in the office. You do have to be a member to be able to access it, and you do have to log on um, on our website. We do have an ARCA library here, which are publications from the NRCA and other organizations or, or companies. And uh, for, for the, to be able to check stuff out, you're welcome to come in, take a look. Uh, we photocopy the cover, make a note, and you can have the book or CD or DVD for two weeks. It pretty much runs like a library. Um, we do offer OSHA support. We do also offer support with the Register of Contractors. We do have a technical committee. Um, so if you ever have a question or um, even we have residential homeowners contact us with questions, and they typically uh, respond within about 24 hours. We have a large training room that is available for members to utilize. Um, you can do lunch and learns. Uh, we even have people do interviews. Um, so it, it's a nice room set up with a TV uh, screen and refrigerator stocked full of sodas and water. So we do offer a base sheet, which is our quarterly newsletter. The next one should be coming out the end of November, beginning of December. As far as resources and support, uh, there's myself, ARCA staff, and then the technical committee is Peach Moss with Star Roofing, Russ Hyman with Griffin Roofing, and Dave Coltrap with Division 7 Systems. Events. Uh, we do like to try to offer social and sporting events as a way for associate members um, to develop relationships with the contractors and um, also for roofing contractors, uh, some of those established ones to develop mentorship opportunities with new companies. Um, we do have a, a wide variety of the training and educational and informational classes, as I mentioned. Social networking events. We do have an annual roofing expo trade show, and this year we just had our 52nd annual expo and up in Flagstaff. Lunch and learns, lunch and dinner meetings, sporting events, and more. So our website was recently relaunched at the end of 2020, and we did try to make it a little more user-friendly for residential homeowners, which is a great um, lead generation for our roofing contractors. Advocacy. ARCA is part of the Arizona, um, is Arizona's for Fair Contracting. It's a coalition made up of various trade associations. Uh, we do have a lobbyist um, that we do help fund, and we fight for things like TPT. Um, they'll be discussing the current 1099 versus W-2, and um, uh, basically, we try to support any legislative efforts regarding construction and the roofing industry. How to become involved. So there are things you can do to be involved with ARCA. And we do have a variety of committees um, that put on the, the sporting events. Um, you can sponsor an event. You can register for our training and events. Utilize your time at the events. Um, show up. Bring your business card introduce yourself and, and uh, meet people, uh, various volunteer efforts. And then we also have an event app that you can download to be able to keep track of uh, what's coming up. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, we'll open it up now. If anybody has any qu uh, questions, you can use the question feature and go to webinar to submit them. Uh, you can do that at any time and we'll be monitoring those as they come in. Um, I'll just say uh, we have become very familiar with the training room at ARCA 
And it is one of the best places for us to go train. And like Jennifer said, the refrigerator is always stocked. And I'm always amazed at how many snacks the young roofers can go through in a day. So uh, there's plenty of uh, food and beverage available, and it is a very comfortable room to do training in. So with that, I'll turn it over to John. Great, thank you. And yes, I, I have to dovetail on to what Lisa was saying. As far as the local and state and regional associations, they provide us great, uh, great help on the ground. The TRIA is a national organization. It's a manufacturer's organization. So of course, we deal with a lot of contractors. We are a manufacturer's organization with contractor members, but we're a national organization that typically our largest efforts uh, are at a national scale, uh, dealing with lobbying in Washington, D.C. And, and technical issues related to our product. So the support from an association like ARCA, uh, you know, it's, it's similar ARCA, ARCAT in Texas and FRSA in Florida. Those are the three biggest supporters for us. And you can imagine with a, a smaller association like ARCA, where the population of the state and the spread out nature of the state uh, related to that population, it's super helpful. So we really appreciate that. In addition, the reason that we value the state and local or organizations is that that state and local knowledge can't be replaced. At a national level, we can deal with a lot of things and get some insights on the local level, but the interaction, the contractor, uh, interaction and the ability to support those contractors for a local association are unparalleled. So today I have Jerry Brown here. Jerry is a registered roof observer, a roof consultant. He owns Recorp. He has four generations. Uh, his family has been standing nearly 100 years in roofing. He's got a passion for refining the critical details of roof designs, building a better roofing community through his support and by sharing his knowledge. And most importantly, Jerry, uh, for today, Jerry's the chair of education for the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association, and he manages the ARCA Academy. So Jerry has 10 of the most common mistakes made by applicators. So first, Jerry, welcome, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. So I've got your 10, your list of 10 up there, and if, if you're able to, we'll just go ahead and start through. I've got the first one highlighted, and if you could speak to it a little bit we can give the people a little bit of an idea of what your course is like and how you support those contractors on a local level. All right, thank you. So the uh, education classes that we give, we do it just a little bit different here because uh, Arizona has a little bit of a different climate and our way our buildings are built are slightly different. We have a lot of stucco and east systems. So we run into a lot of different problems uh, and challenges. Uh, as a roof consultant, we're out there inspecting these roofs on a regular basis every day. And we started keeping kind of a list of things that were going wrong that we see on a pretty regular basis. In our classes, uh, we use a lot of photographs. So there'll be anywhere from 80 to 100 photographs showing uh, items that, uh, that have been mistakes made by contractors or applicators or the designer uh, or even the uh, the general contractor. But as we move through these uh, issues, we try to educate the contractors in our classes that, you know, please take the TRI course, uh, get yourself educated from there, and then we can talk about everything that goes on in the Arizona market itself. Uh, the perimeter flashing, fastening, uh, that is, probably the number one issue that most people have caught up on but we're still seeing people make that mistake they'll uh they'll nail the uh, first three courses in from the fascia and then they'll forget about the ridge or they'll forget about the rake and they won't uh fasten those uh three feet in so we see this on a pretty regular basis you would think that uh, everybody had caught on by now but there's still a lot of these mistakes being made and as we move through each one of these uh, items the top 10 items uh, we see these on an over and over basis so that's why we're bringing them up and the process of the classes uh, we go through this in detail we show the photographs we show the the tiles the different types of tiles and how they got to be fastened uh, the proper head fastening, uh, wall flashings. This is another one that's quite unique that we see uh, all the time because there's different issues that they run into. So 
uh, head wall flashing, uh, most of the time the flashing itself is a mistake. They've got the tile all the way up where they need it, but the flashing either too high, too low, or doesn't extend out far enough. And a lot of times in the re-roofing uh, portion of the industry, uh, the guys say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, it, it is where it is, but that's not the case. Uh, the flashings have to be removed and reinstalled correctly during the re-roofing process. Uh, let's say you change from a, a flat tile to an S-tile. Uh, everything's got to be moved and changed or vice versa from S-tile down to a flat tile. Uh, that head wall flashing becomes, you know, critical because that's where so much water is going to blow in uh, into the structure. The proper detailing is stuck on east walls. Uh, this is a big issue, big, big issue. Uh, they'll have, uh, they'll build a house, they'll put the Z-bar in, and the Z-bar is about one inch off from the deck and is tucked in behind the stucco east system. And you go to re-roof it and you cannot turn your underlayment four inches back up the walls. Uh, so we have to explain to people, hey, when you run into this situation, there are some details and special situations that we can do, but most time you've got to move, remove that uh, stucco on each system and put the flashings in the right place, or you're going to end up with uh, leak issues in, in the future. Uh, the securing of the cut tiles. Uh, cut tiles at the hips and the valleys, and even along uh, high walls where you have a tile channel, we're finding on a regular basis that the guys are just forgetting to do this. And we got tiles slipping and sliding down our roofs. And luckily, most of our roofs are running, you know, 412, 512, maybe 612 pitch roofs. Uh, so we're not having a lot of tiles falling down the roof and hitting the ground or hitting somebody. But uh, this is a multi-story building, even at 412 with our high winds, that's a problem. The uh, proper spacing of the tile. So, you know, you your guide in the TRI shows you how to properly space all these tiles. And for whatever reason, uh, we'll find that we'll have a two inch headlap instead of a three inch headlap. Uh, so the tiles aren't spaced correctly. And if they do it one row down low and one row in the middle, one row up high that gets off, we've got a whole roof that is not spaced correctly and there's no way to fix it except for start over. So we, get with the, the contractors and tell them, hey, you know, just remember that three inches. We need that three inches all the time. Uh, th that's the headlap. So the spacing that you create when you, you uh, lay out your tiles, then end up giving you the proper headlap out in the field. And the headlap out in the field also uh, becomes an issue on the head walls. You gotta have that same coverage up at the head walls. Secure and seal the hip tiles. Uh, Again, we have that hip and ridge tiles that they put over the top of uh, each other. As they overlap, there's supposed to be a sealant there. Uh, we'll find guys that will take a, an acrylic caulking and put it on the side of the tile and try to hold the tile down with an acrylic caulking or uh, a urethane caulking. And we have water blowing in there. We have leaks occurring from it. So it's a it's a ongoing issue there too. Plus. You have to remember here in Arizona, we have high winds. We get winds of 50, 60, 80 miles an hour. So if it hits those uh, hip and ridge tiles, it'll pull them right off. The crickets? Jerry, can I ask on that, uh, if you don't yeah. mind, what's an adhesive that you like to see as a, as a roof consultant? You go up on a roof and the contractor says, Jerry, what should I use here? What do you think would be best? What's your personal opinion for an adhesive on those hip and ridge tiles? Well, any adhesive that is approved to seal tile one to the other and keep it in place is okay with us. Uh, so if the tiles are clean and you want to put a sealant over the top of that nail that is holding that uh, first tile down, you can go ahead and use a one part urethane sealant to connect the two together. But remember the one part uh, sealant, one part urethane sealant has to have a an adhesive uh, hold on the tile. And if it's not doing it, don't use it. So you want that you want that uh, sealant to stop the water, but you need that sealant to keep the tiles from blowing off. Crickets. Cr 
Crickets are uh, a pretty big issue on all of our roofing here. Uh, the contractors quite often feel that they're not responsible for the crickets, but our Arizona Register of Contractors uh, clearly states that if the cricket is incorrectly built by another contractor, the roofing contractor must and shall uh, have that cricket corrected. And if there's nobody to correct it, it is his responsibility to correct it. Well, quite often we'll have a um, large chimney or something of that sort up on the roof that's maybe uh, five feet wide and there's no cricket on the high side of it. And they just hold the towel back and hope the the, the water will run off the uh, backside of it and get around it and come on down the roof. Uh, remember, we only get about seven, seven and a half inches of rain uh, each year, but the vast majority of that usually comes in three rains. So we can get an inch and a half of rain in 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and that volume of water, when it starts moving, will back up underneath anything. And that's why the crickets are so important. So the, our contractors need to always remember that uh, the cricket is your responsibility in the end. Securement of the rake tiles. We have the stucco and eave systems again, and the general contractors or the home builders do not put nailers up there to secure the, the uh, rake tiles to. And quite often, you if they try to, and put a nail in that uh, rake tile on the side, they're going to need a, a nail that's five inches long to reach the wood because they got uh, two inches of styrofoam, an inch of uh, stucco, and uh, a standard nail that you're going to use is not going to reach the wood. And so they need to make sure that the uh, wood nailers are in place that they can secure the rake tiles. One of our problems in Arizona is everything dries out. All of our wood dries out and cracks. So we don't have uh, problems with wet, roads, wet wood so much, but we do have problems with dried out wood. So if you're securing rake tiles uh, with a standard size nail that you're gonna use to pour that rake tile, uh, in about five to 10 years, that wood's dried out and those nails are backing out and those rake tiles are falling off. So you have to keep that in mind uh, when you're securing rake tiles that, you know, five years down the road, if the, these rake tiles are falling off and hitting somebody in the head, you're still liable in the state of Arizona. Arizona's liability uh, laws reach out about eight years. Uh, so you're responsible for whatever you do for eight years here in Arizona. So this has become a problem. Uh, the incorrect flashing details. You know, the TRI has a great manual for details. And uh, those details fit 90% of all the issues that we run across. There are some uh, details that we run across because of the EAF system and the stucco systems and the ways the houses are built out here that it may not find it in the uh, TRI manual. When you can't find it, uh, get a hold of Arca, get a hold of me, and we will help you figure out how to create a detail that will work, allow the roof to remain watertight, and provide protection for you against future legal litigation. And uh, there's always a way to fix them. And we most of the time have the way to fix it. If you just look into it, just call Arca. Jerry, Jerry, thank you very much. And, and I think going through the, your 10 uh, observations of the most common failure points is, is perfect to introduce your class. And I think as we go forward, you know, it'll be great to coordinate uh, this coming year when, when we have a manual certification training, not that we necessarily do them one after the other, but I think that coordinating so that maybe within a week or 10 days time, uh, so a, a contractor can send a couple of his people to the, the manual certification where they can really get the details and the the nuts and bolts of the code, but boy, if they could send a few of their people and have those same guys come back for your class that is more, uh, you know, don't let the tile fall on your customer's head type stuff and really dialing in on the problems that you see, that'd be a great combination. Yeah, we'd be happy to do it. Okay, well, listen, I got, I have your current schedule. I know you don't have anything on there right now. You can see 
uh, uh, this is the Arizona uh, Roofing Contractors Association website. We've got a class tomorrow. It's too late to sign up for that. But the fun thing is, is we our new schedule for the for the uh, coming year is up. And the first one that we have added for an in-person manual certification is at the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association on January 13th. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, maybe we can have you as a, as a lunch speaker to introduce uh, your class to the people that we have there. They'll be happy to do that. Okay, Jared, thank you very much. And I think I'll turn this back over to Lisa so she can um, close out, but I'm gonna leave the contact information for all of us up there. I hope you both wanted your phone numbers out there. We put ours out. We answer our, our cell phones whenever we can because we know that a contractor's question is usually pretty straightforward. And if we can answer it then and there, uh, it might save them a real problem over the weekend with somebody Googling things that uh, uh, we never know what they'll find out there. Yeah, and just so you know, for those on the call, I have opened up the microphone. So if anybody would like to ask a question of John or Jerry or Jennifer, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. If you raise your hand first, then I'll, I'll be able to call on you so we don't talk over each other. At this point, I'm not seeing any. So I'll remind everybody that uh, a couple of the things that Jerry mentioned on his top 10 list, we have videos out on our YouTube channel that address those, that particularly there's one on layout. So you can do that even spacing. Um, so don't forget to look there and uh, we will have this up on the YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. It was good to have, have you guys on and, and Jerry. And we look forward to coming down and having our first in-person training uh, since COVID started uh, in early January. So we look forward to seeing you both. So Jennifer, stock the fridge you. of Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, you guys have a great week. And thanks for coming on. You too. Thank you.